Hey, bro. Hit my intro. What's happening, my visionaries? It's your man, J. Rock. I'm back in effect. I'm live and direct, and I'm coming at your neck with that ain't nothing. Video, 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 baby. Ah. The video, man, as always, just like, subscribe if you want to. If you don't, then just do it if you want to do it, because Jesus said this is the right thing to do. What's happening, my visionary? Your man, J-Rock, man. Back up in the same race and need another video, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. Back in effect, live and direct. We yet need another video. So I'm about to check out Todd, and I'm going to make sure I have pronounced his name properly. So give me one second. One. Long ass motherfucking time later. All right, so Todd Rungren. Initially, that's how I had presumed that's how his name was pronounced, but I want to make sure everybody has a moniker, everybody has a pseudonym, everybody has a name. So I'm going to make sure I pronounce it correctly. So we have Todd Rungren. Hello, it's me, 1972. I'm not familiar with this artist at all. This would be my first initial introduction. Um, this was actually a request given to me on one of my streams that I said I was going to subsequently do on an individual video. So here it is, man. I'm very excited to check this out and very intrigued of what it's going to sound like because uh, I have a little bit of an inference about what it could potentially sound like just given from that particular era that it's from, um, you know, as, as it pertains to sonically. But, you know, I won't know till I shut the fuck up and hit play. So... <clears throat> Without further ado, let me put on my headphones of truth. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then let me do what it do. Todd Rungren, hello is me, hello is you. And if you see me, I see you. You see me, I see you. Do we see each other? Unless you're blind, are you blind? Okay. Then you hear me? 110 binary? Okay. Either way, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for attending. I'm gracious. Love you all. But uh, with no further digression, let's get into it. Hello, it's me, Todd Rundgren. Let's do it. Woo. Okay, I'm already loving this. Okay, so I know I'm pausing. Please forgive me. Nah, it's my channel. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want to do. But I'm pausing because there's this. There, I have these moments, these musical, these moments of epiphany, these eureka moments where I find this correlation between something that I've already heard and something that I haven't heard prior to this, preceding this. So I've heard this because I have. I have there's a song that I love by Erica Badu. It's called Hello, featuring one of my favorite, my actually my favorite rapper, Andre Three Thousand. And she does this sort of interpolation of these lyrics. She uses these lyrics of the beginning. So, yeah, that's, again, this interconnected, uh, 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 sort of interconnected universe, musical universe that exists. I, I'm loving it, man. All right, let's get back into it. I love the way this sounds, man. I love these chords. Me. Space. I'm loving this space. Love these piano keys, these chords, and these licks on the guitar. Hear a slight organ too, I believe. section of the trumpet. Yes. Oh, that's what's 
yourselves. Harmonies. the swing of these drums and groove and spend the night if you think I should oh it's brass section What a track. Simply. Simply. I, I don't even think there's anything I can pontific pontificate on, a, you know, about this. And that would, that would be sufficient to explain just, just the, how this track is, how it affects me. So, you know, excluding, irrespective of that, that connection that I made with a song that I already know, um, this, that version is obviously somewhat of a rendition or sort of an interpolation of these lyrics onto that. But excluding that, man, this song on its own in its own singular form is an entity upon itself. I love the composition. I absolutely love it. It's so, so captivating, so almost fleeting. It's fluttering and uh, it's very languid and very listless and very, you know, it's very, it flows seamlessly. I mean, it flows with liquidity. And fluidity and uh I, I definitely i definitely did enjoy this uh a lot i love this composition it, de it definitely sounds derivative of the age that it, that it does derive from but not in a negative connotation i don't want you to be to perceive that negatively when i say man I, when i make that statement there's a lot of components that i love about this i mean i love the composition you know i think my favorite component or the most the component that you know captivates me the most had to be just sort of the the manner in which this track can be fast a little bit fast tempo but still somehow be methodical meticulous you know sort of punctilious in the way that it it places its rhythms its bars its beats the its chord progression i i just really love how if it's fast it's a little bit fast paced a little bit high up tempo yet something about it still has this sort of uh listless quality where it's sort of languid and it's sort of in the wind you know it's very airy if that if that registers or that makes sense um just meaning that it's fluttering it just it sounds like a a a, 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 a uh what can i say it, it sounds more like a i don't even know what adjective or word to ascribe to it is it's just very jovial and I'm not sure. And I listened to the lyrics to the degree what I could what I could discern wasn't as jovial as the music, you know, uh, sounded, and sort of belied the meaning of the song. But but just the song itself, it's it it does sound somewhat idyllic. It sounds almost folksy to a degree. Uh, but I like every component of this man, and uh, it 
it sounds almost kind of not necessarily similar, but mm, may somewhat to King Crimson, just a, just a degree, but mm, maybe it's not a good comparison. I don't, I'm not sure, but that's that's kind of what I've heard to a degree. Um, just that sort of almost suppose you could categorize it as psychedelic. It, don't really have to ascribe any label, you know, genre classifications to it. It simply is what it is, and that is good music, great craftsmanship, great musicality presented and, and exuded in this. So I, I enjoy this. I enjoy this a lot. All right, so just divulging to the lyrics um, very, very, very briefly. So verse one, it says, hello, it's me. I've thought about us for a long, long time. Maybe I think too much, but something's wrong. There's something here that doesn't last too long. Maybe I shouldn't think of you as mine. So this is obviously a portrayal. This is obviously a depiction of someone who's having doubts, who's incredulous about a particular a situation, a relationship that they are involved in, perhaps, and to where there's something, there's an insecurity that's persisting, that's that's manifesting itself in this individual, um, either either self-inflicted or either something that they that they believe or purport to see. You know, a lot of times we create and manifest things in, in our own mind, falsify things, create things to convince ourselves of something, especially when you deal with preceding or pre-existing trauma, uh, psychological trauma uh, that may have that may have you know been uh, transpired when you were younger, and you now you have a, the inability to trust. So this could obviously this could be prevalent of that or, or or a portrayal of that. So maybe this he's saying hello, it's me. So perhaps this is obviously this is um, first person. Perhaps he's talking to someone. So he's maybe he's having a conversation with this individual that he's involved with, or and then he's saying, "I know I've thought about this for a long, long time." He said, "Maybe I think too much. Maybe I'm overanalyzing something that's so infinitesimal, so insignificant, and consequential. But in my mind, there's something in my intuition that's telling me that this isn't right. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't think of you as mine. Having that little bit of that doubt, that incredulity, that that ex that's exuding from him, that insecurity." Verse two, seeing you or any seeing you or seeing anything as much as I do, I love that line for some reason. I love that 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 amalgamation of words. It's almost like it's almost inversed. Seeing you or seeing anything as much as I do you, I take for granted that you're always there. I take for granted that you just don't care. Sometimes I can't help seeing all the way through. So he's stating. So perhaps he's stating that, and how I interpret this is so. Seeing he's he incessantly sees an individual, perhaps in that could be a double entendre. Perhaps it could be metaphorical. Perhaps he's it could be uh, pertaining to the physical seeing, the physical sight, the physical interaction that he has, and then it could be his own um, 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 psychological reflection of how he sees. So seeing you in his thoughts. So this individual's image may manifest itself in his mind. I mean, then he states in the preceding line, I take for granted that you're always there. So in his mind now, he's stating that he he has this this sense of regret and uh, this sense of con contrition, perhaps, because he, he took for granted that that individual is always there. But then in the preceding line kind of contradicts the preceding line where now he's saying, I take for granted that you just don't care. Now, that could be perhaps pertaining to something else. Maybe she maybe he's stating that he she just doesn't care about that could be him saying that she doesn't care about him. The relationship, but I don't think that's just just using the preceding lines. I don't think that's the case. Can perhaps could be saying that you just don't care, stating that maybe he, she doesn't care about his insecurities. Maybe she doesn't care about his flaws, imperfections. Could be. Um, sometimes I can't can't help seeing you all the way through. Um, seeing the all, I, sometimes I can't help seeing all the way through. Perhaps he's stating I just can't help. I I, I cannot control. I'm just compelled to just. To stay to stick, so perhaps this is referring to uh, maybe that he believes in his mind he shouldn't be in this relationship. So he's saying, I, sometimes I can't help seeing all the way through. Maybe he has this completionist mindset to where he has to, if he's going to be involved with something, he's going to be involved with 100%. He wants to see it to the end. So perhaps that's, that's him lamenting of that. So it's important to me to know that you are free because I never want to make you change for me. So then he's re reassuring this individual, this woman, perhaps, and stating that I want you to know that you're free to make your own decision in this relationship because I never want to make you change for me. I, I prefer you the way you are. That's the reason that, I, that I'm that i so infatuated with you, that I'm enamored with you, that I'm in this relationship with you because I, I you are who you are. So he's reassuring her. Verse three, 
think of me. You know that I that I be with you if I could. I've come around to see you once in a while, or if I ever need a reason to smile and spend the night, if you think I should. So now he's saying, okay, think of me. So he's stating that have these these. I want you to perceive me, have these perceptions of me. You know that I be with you if I could. So stating that perhaps that this could be indicative of some distance that's that's separating them. And perhaps it could be indicative that they, they're not at a point in the relationship where they where he wants it, that he believes it should be. So he's saying, I you know I would be there if I could be there. Um, but I can't. So he's saying I physically cannot be there, but you know that I would if I could. So again, reassurance. I'll come around and see you once in a while. So he's saying that I do come around and if I ever need a reason to smile, you know, a little bit of a little bit of flirtation, a little bit of just kind of reassurance again. And spend a night if you think I should. So giving it, putting the putting the ball in her hand, giving her the at her volition, at her discretion. Okay, last verse. Um, and just that little refrain again. It's important to me that you know you're free. Then the last verse is just a reprise of the first. So again, this could be a song. The high interpret is a song about a sort of a, a particular love, a particular sort of interaction, the relationship to where it perhaps is in a stage where it's it's in turmoil, it's in disarray, it's in a bit of a perplexion, perplexity because. Both people, one person, one individual is unsure about where they stand in the situation. That's never a good place to be. Just my own perception. You never want to be in a place where you think you don't know where you stand. Um, you have to always know that where you know where you stand or you know where you stand at least. The other individual may not know where they stand, but you know where you stand and you stand on your principles and you stand on that and you, you be confident in that. I think the worst position to be in is a, is a state of insecurity. I think the best place to be in is a position of I'm a secure with who I am because I know who I am within myself. I have that that sense of self worth, so I know who I am. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna ramble on too long because the video could be extensive. But man, I enjoy the song. I love the composition. I love the groove. I love the the the, the lyrics. It's very simplistic, but it, it, the way that it's conveyed and the way that it's executed is great. So I hope you all enjoyed this reaction as well. If you did, go ahead, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you want to, do your thing. I don't know whatever you do. But um, anyhow, man, Shaman Day Raw. Once again, all I got left to say is, this there is a salute to you. Remember, I say, but never stress. I always always do your very best. Live, love, love life. Because why? Because life is beautiful. That's why I'm going to catch y'all on the flip side, baby. Deuces.